Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at the serial communication peripheral in the MSP430, specifically the UART. In this video, we're going to do an example of sending out a byte of information out on the UART and observing the packet with an oscilloscope. And this one will be very similar to the last example we did, but this time let's choose a different baud rate and we'll choose a different piece of information to send, but this will give us a little, another uh, chance at practicing how to set this UART up and it'll become hopefully second nature. Okay, so here's our system. Here's the A1 uh, UART peripheral on the MSP430. And just to remind you, you kind of have to set up the clock, you have to choose a clock, you have to choose, set up the baud rate generator to get the generate or the rate that you want. Then you set up your framing options and then you just drop information into the transmit buffer and it'll automatically get shifted out. So our task is we want to set the, the UART up at 9600 baud and let's send out a uh, hex 55. So that'll be eight bits that basically just go 10101010. So it'll be a lot of transitions. And then let's configure our frames to be just the standard 8-bit, LSB first, no parity, no address, uh, one stop bit. Uh, we are sending this, we're choosing A1 for our UART, UART even though there are two uh, UART peripherals on here, or two potential UART peripherals, A0 and A1. We're going to choose A1 because it comes out, well, you'll see why. It's it's because it's the one we can get to with the by removing a jumper. And it's also a, a connection that if we keep learning about A1, we'll eventually be able to send information directly up to the computer. Okay, so let's start with choosing our clock and configuration settings for the baud rate generator to get 9600. So notice that this one is interesting because there's actually two options for 9600 that we can select uh, with this MSP430 and A clock and SM clock frequencies. And I can choose SM clock, which is one megahertz, and I can get 9600. But notice that the settings for it require me to go into um, oversampling mode. And while that's not a big deal, it's just an extra step. So I have to set this bit and I have to use the first stage modulation settings. Whereas if I do 9600 using a clock, then I only, I can leave this, uh, this bit cleared indicating low frequency mode. And I only have to set the second stage modulation settings. So why don't we choose that one? It'll show us how to use a clock. Uh, and it's, it's just flat out easier to set up. So remember this this three is the prescaler where I take 32K and divide it by 9600 and I get three point something. So I put the integer part in there and then I look up in the table to uh, for the first stage modulation settings and I get 92. Notice that these registers for the prescaler value, the entire register is dedicated to the number so I can just drop a three into this. But then notice that the modulation control word has uh, three different fields in it. And the upper eight bits are the second stage modulation setting. And that's what we want to drop 92 into. And then notice that all the rest of them, the first stage we're not using. And since the USO S16 is a zero, we can basically clear out these bottom bits. That means I can just simply write UCA1 uh, MCTLW. I can just put hex 9200 in there and that'll get me set up the way I want to be. So to get the clock selected and the baud rate that I want, I choose uh, A clock in this multiplexer. I drop a three into the prescaler and I drop 9200 hex into the modulator setting. We'll use all the default framing options for this because that's the most common thing that you see in UART. So what we're gonna do is we will just leave the reset values for no parity, LSB first, eight bit length and one stop bit. So that means we, we can get the standard frame that we want without having to configure anything because these are the settings that, that the UART is in out of reset. Okay, so then that's the, that's the UART. Uh, then the last thing is to enable the pin to allow the A1 transmit line to, to take over. And so we're gonna, it's, it happens to be shared with the port four bit three pin, and we need to go into the port four select registers and tell it, hey, instead of driving out the port bit, use the transmit line that's wired up from UART A1. And again, this comes out on this little pin header right here on the launch pad board that we can connect in the oscilloscope to. Okay, once we get it all set up, 
the theory of operation is every time we write to the transmit buffer, it's gonna automatically shift it out. So we'll do just like we did last time, but let's drop in something. We'll drop in hex five, five, and then we'll delay a little bit and then we will watch it. <laughs> okay, you ready? Let's rock here. So we got CCS and we're gonna do a new CCS project. And why don't we name it? We're doing uh, it's in C, we're doing UART. This is transmit example two, and we'll do sending bytes at 96600. Okay, got my main, bye bye. All right, now here we go. Uh, let's go ahead, first I'm gonna nuke that little comment block right there, and I'm ready to go. So the first thing I wanna do is uh, set up UART. Okay, remember, when you set up the UART, you gotta put it in software reset so that it, none of the settings that uh, don't inadvertently cause it to shift something out. And you put it in a software reset by going into the UCA1 CTL W0 register. That's the Universal Serial Communications A1 Control Word 0 register. And luckily, there's a bit mask in there that is defined called UCSW reset for software reset. So this is uh, put UART A1 into software reset. Okay, now let's do the clock, okay? So first thing we wanna do is go into that same configuration register, and that is where we change the settings for the clock bits in the UCSSEL bits. And luckily there's a awesome little mask called UCSSEL underscore underscore A clock. So then this is choose A clock or UART A1. And life is good. And now what we need to do is set up the prescaler and the modulator. And so we go to the baud rate control register. So it's that's uh, UCA1 BRW. And then we're just gonna drop in what value. So we gotta go, we gotta remember what we're doing here. So we wanted to get three, okay? Let me get three. And this is set prescaler to three, and then next we drop 9,200 hex into their modulator, contr modulation control register. So that's UCA1 MCTLW, and I can just say zero uh, X 9,200. Uh, again, I could do a bitwise or on either of those and they would work, uh, but you can also just do an equal sign. So prescaler, so let's see, what am I doing? Prescaler. Uh, and then this one is setup modulation. Okay, all right. Now let's do the ports uh, before we take this out of, uh, so let's set up ports. And I keep saying ports, but I really mean pins. Uh, so the way you do that is I wanna do P4S select one, and I wanna clear bit, bit three. Now let's think about what I'm trying to do here. So this is, I want to want port four bit three to use UART A1TX. And I do that by saying P4SEL one bit three and P P4. Thinking through how we're doing this. P4SEL zero bit three and the setting is zero one. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to do with these two statements. And so this next statement is gonna be P4SEL zero, and I'm gonna now bitwise or to set bit three. And that's what then gets me this setting that, I, that I'm after. Okay, so it's two configuration registers, P4 select one, P4 select zero. And we modify bit position three, that, that corresponds to port four bit three. And we, if we give it a zero one setting, that means it's gonna use the UART transmit. Okay, so then the last thing we'll do is let's turn on the GPIO system completely. So PM5CTL0, and I do that by clearing the lock LPM5 bit. So then this is turn on IO. All right, so then that should be that. And then guess what? We're ready. So now we're gonna take this buddy out of reset. So all I do now is I control C that, control V it, and I am now gonna clear this. So I change it to a bitwise and, and what I'm gonna do is this take UART A1 out of software reset.
But this time we have set this up and it's ready to go. So now let's just do our simple little uh, main loop. So we're gonna do main looper. And we're gonna drop five five into the transmit buffer. So we'll do while one and let's start off a little infinite loop. And here's the register, UCA1 TX buff. And I'm just gonna drop in there zero X five five and then transmit five five over UART A1 TX. And then let's delay. Okay, so let's delay for a little bit. So I'm gonna go four I is equal to zero. And then i is less than 10,000, and then i equals i plus one. And if I do that, I need to int i, I need to define that variable. And that is it. Okay, so let's let's test this buddy out and see, let's first start off with the typos. So let's see what kind of typos we had in there. Oh, ho, ho, look at that, that ain't bad. No typos. No typos. Okay, it's downloaded to the board. So now let's take a look. So I've got my board right here and I have removed the jumper on J101 and J101 is this little piece of text right there. J101 is uh, where RX and TX for A1 are routed to. And what I can do is I can pop up the little jumper off of that third from the bottom, and then I can take an oscilloscope and I can probe on the MCU side. So make sure that you're on the side closest to the actual MCU. And then go ahead, what I do is I'm, gonna, I'm using an analog discovery two for my oscilloscope. So I have channel one, and then I have ground connected to a ground, and then I have channel one negative uh, down there connected to another ground. And so now I am ready to go so let's let's bring up our oscilloscope first and we'll get that set up uh and then we'll hit run okay so let's see if i do uh, okay so this is my measurement from the last time so let's do this uh let's, let me run <clears throat> there shouldn't be anything on there okay so i've got my oscilloscope set up and there's nothing on there and so now let's take our little buddy I'm gonna move it down here and I'm gonna do that so that when I hit run, I start seeing stuff move around. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit run. Okay, something happened. Something happened, interesting. All right, so let's zoom out a little bit. So I'm gonna zoom, 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 zoom. And holy moly, look at this. So I've got myself a pattern. I've got myself a bit sequence. And let's try to zoom a little bit so we can kind of see it. Okay, so here I come. Comes along, start bit, and then it goes one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, stop bit. <laughs> there it is, all right, that's awesome. Now remember, this is MSB or LSB first. So if I go and I look at the little picture that I draw that's annotated, uh, remember that those there's the one, zero, one pattern, right? And I have it that messed up, but this is the pattern in here and it's LSB first. So it's 01010101. And if you put that in order, what happens is that it comes out to be uh, LSB first. So it's actually 101010101010, which is 55. Okay, that's awesome. Let's check the baud rate. So I'm lo looking at this and I'm trying to figure out, it's like, is this 9600? And the answer is, well, let's figure out what 9600 would be in terms of bit periods. If I did one divided by 96. 100, the bit period would be basically 100, of uh, roughly about 100 microseconds. So when I look at this, I see this is 121 microseconds. This one is 91.5 microseconds. This one is 120. This one is 91. This one is 91. This one is 120. It's not exactly perfect, is it? And that's okay. That just has to do with the modulation. So the modulation is trying its best to get you exactly or as close to 9600, but it's showing you that it isn't perfect. It is absolutely not giving you exactly 9600. Like if you built a dedicated circuit to this, it's this is an artifact of trying to create this uh, 9600 baud rate off of a clock that's 32 kilohertz. Okay, but this works. I mean, it does. You know, sometimes this will lead to an error. But it, in, for the most part, this does work. Okay, so we did it. We sent AA, or excuse me, we sent 55 over the UART on A1 of the MSP430 at 9600, and life is good. All right, nice work. As always, support my channel by subscribing, and see ya.